The night shift. Ben Thompson had worked as a night security guard for over five years. He liked the solitude and the quietness of the night shifts. The pay was decent and the work was straightforward. Patrol the premises, check the security cameras, and make sure everything was locked up tight. Tonight was no different, or so he thought. The building Ben guarded was an old warehouse that had been converted into office space. It was an eerie place at night, with long, dimly lit corridors and empty rooms. The building was supposedly haunted, but Ben never put much stock in ghost stories. He had never seen anything unusual until that night. Chapter 1. The Discovery Ben started his shift like any other, making his rounds and checking the security cameras. Around midnight, he was in the control room, sipping his coffee and watching the monitors. That's when he saw it, a figure moving through one of the hallways. At first, he thought it was a trick of the light, or maybe a shadow cast by a passing car outside. But the figure moved with purpose, its steps slow and deliberate. Ben leaned closer to the screen, trying to make out more details. The figure was dressed in old, tattered clothes and seemed to be dragging something behind it. Ben's heart raced as he grabbed his flashlight and headed towards the hallway where he had seen the figure. As he approached, he could hear a faint, scraping sound. He rounded the corner and saw the figure at the far end of the corridor, disappearing into one of the rooms. Hey! You're not supposed to be here! Ben called out, his voice echoing through the empty hallway. The figure didn't respond. Ben quickened his pace, reaching the door where the figure had vanished. He pushed it open and shined his flashlight inside. The room was empty, but the air was heavy with a strange, metallic smell. Ben's stomach churned as he stepped inside, Glenna sweeping the room with his flashlight. In the far corner, he saw a large old trunk. It was covered in dust and looked like it hadn't been touched in years. The scraping sound was louder now, coming from inside the trunk. Ben approached cautiously, his heart pounding in his chest. He reached out and slowly lifted the lid. Inside the trunk was a corpse, its eyes wide open in a silent scream. The body was badly decomposed, the skin gray and shriveled. Ben stumbled back, nearly dropping his flashlight. The room seemed to spin around him, and he felt a wave of nausea wash over him. Chapter 2. The Investigation Ben called the police immediately. They arrived within minutes, and the building was soon swarming with officers and crime scene investigators. Ben tried to explain what he had seen, but his words felt hollow, as if he was recounting a nightmare rather than something real. The officers took his statement and assured him they would investigate thoroughly. They identified the body as a man named James Carter, who had been reported missing several years ago. The circumstances of his death were unclear, but the condition of the body suggested foul play. That night, after the police had left and the building was empty once more, Ben couldn't bring himself to continue his rounds. He sat in the control room, staring at the security monitors, hoping to see something that would make sense of what had happened. Around 3 a.m., he saw the figure again. This time, it was standing in front of the same room where the trunk had been found. Ben's blood ran cold. He watched as the figure turned and looked directly into the camera. Its eyes were empty, hollow sockets, and its mouth moved as if it was speaking, but no sound came through the speakers. Chapter 3. The Haunting Ben couldn't shake the image of the figure from his mind. It haunted his thoughts, filling him with a sense of dread he couldn't explain. He decided to do some digging of his own, hoping to uncover something that would help him understand what was happening. He learned that James Carter had been an employee at the warehouse back when it was still operational. He had been a night shift worker, just like Ben. According to the reports, Carter had been involved in some shady dealings and had made enemies with the wrong people. It was believed that he had been killed and his body hidden to cover up the crime. But that didn't explain the figure Ben had seen. He started to wonder if the stories about the building being haunted were true. Maybe Carter's spirit was trapped unable to find peace. Ben knew he had to find out more. Chapter 4. The Confrontation. The next night, Ben returned to work, determined to confront whatever was haunting the building. He carried a small voice recorder with him, hoping to capture any sounds or voices. As the night wore on, he made his rounds, his senses on high alert. Around midnight, he heard the scraping sound again, 
It was coming from the same room where the trunk had been found. Ben took a deep breath and headed towards the noise. When he reached the door, he paused, his hand trembling on the doorknob. He pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room was dark, the air heavy with the same metallic smell. Ben switched on his flashlight and swept the beam across the room. The trunk was gone, but the scraping sound continued, coming from the far corner. As he approached, he saw the figure standing there. It was Carter, his hollow eyes fixed on Ben. The figure raised a skeletal hand and pointed to the floor. Ben followed the gesture and saw another, smaller trunk hidden beneath a pile of old boxes. Ben knelt down and opened the trunk. Inside, he found a collection of old documents and photographs, all linked to Carter's shady dealings. There were also several items that looked like they had been used in some kind of ritual. Ben's mind raced as he tried to piece together what it all meant. Suddenly, the room grew colder, and Ben felt a presence behind him. He turned to see Carter's figure standing over him, its hollow eyes filled with a sorrowful plea. Ben realized that Carter was trying to tell him something, to show him the truth. Chapter 5, The Twist Ben took the documents and photographs to the police, explaining what he had found. The officers were skeptical at first, but as they examined the evidence, they began to see the connections. It became clear that Carter had been involved in a dangerous game, one that had ultimately led to his death. With the new evidence, the police were able to reopen the case and identify those responsible for Carter's murder. They were arrested and brought to justice, finally giving Carter the closure he had been seeking. That night, as Ben sat in the control room, he felt a sense of peace he hadn't felt in days. He knew that Carter's spirit was at rest, but he also knew that the building would never be the same. The haunting had left its mark, a reminder of the darkness that could linger even in the quietest of places. Just as Ben was about to end his shift, he saw something on the security monitor a figure standing in the hallway. But this time, it wasn't Carter. It was a woman, her eyes filled with fear and desperation. Ben's heart sank as he realized that the building's dark history was far from over. There were still secrets to uncover, still spirits in need of rest. And he knew that as long as he worked the night shift, he would be the one to face them. Epilogue, The New Haunting Ben continued to work at the building, now more aware of the spirits that lingered there. He made it his mission to uncover their stories, to bring them the closure they needed. Each night, he faced new challenges, new hauntings, but he never backed down. He became known as the Ghost Guard, the man who could see and communicate with the spirits. It wasn't an easy job, but Ben knew it was important. He had seen the suffering that unresolved deaths could cause, and he was determined to help in any way he could. One night, as he was making his rounds, he saw the woman's figure again. This time, she wasn't alone. A small child stood beside her, holding her hand. They looked at Ben with a mixture of hope and sorrow, and he knew that another story was about to unfold. Ben took a deep breath and stepped forward, ready to face whatever the night had in store. The building's dark past was still a mystery, but he was determined to uncover every secret, to bring peace to every restless spirit. As he walked down the hallway, the air grew colder and the lights flickered. Ben knew that the night shift was never truly over. The haunting would continue, but so would his mission. And in the quiet, eerie silence of the building, he found a strange sense of purpose. The spirits needed him and he would be there night after night to help them find their way.